ghost. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we'll say. All right. Watch it, John. My humor's coming back again. Uh, I can see that. It's a year and a half worth of it. <laughs> All right. We're live. We're just waiting for some people to come on. Usually I play an intro, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'll wait for some people to come on. I'll hit the old comment button there. There we go. I just got the notification that we're live. Let me hit that button so I can see the comments. All right. 8 p.m. Here they are, nine people already. Hello, everyone. Good evening. It is Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday night. And we are joined by uh, the legend, Mr. John Zaffis, who I haven't seen in a couple of years, probably year and a half at least. And I'm sure the people that follow John are watching and saying, who are these people and why are they talking to him? We are New Jersey Paranormal. Chris, I'm John. Um, thank you for joining us, John. We were talking beforehand for a while here, so I, we got to kind of make it like we're just kind of, hey, how you doing? How you been? <laughs> Absolutely. What have you been up to during the uh, pandemic? Let's start there. Well, I call it being cloistered. That's how I refer to the quarantine, uh, staying in and not being around anybody or anything. I, th I think for all of us, including, you know, uh, you guys and everything, I think one of the hardest things is when we're, we're out there and we're involved with working with people and doing things and going to locations and uh, all of a sudden everything just shuts down. I think that really does a number on you. You know, we, we were talking earlier and I don't have any problem talking about it because I think it can help other people too. You know, it reached, it just reached a point where from me being confined and being in the house, it just drove me so crazy. I, I had to go on happy pills and yeah, <laughs> it, it, just to calm me because I couldn't. News, everyone. You heard yeah, it. yeah, I, I could not accept, you know, it was very difficult to accept that, that, you know, everything was just shut down and our well, did whole you find yourself becoming depressed or just lethargic or why did what made you think you needed something the, the fact of not being around people okay it, it you know not communicating not going back and forth because i i've always been a wanderer i could be in connecticut and in 10 minutes i could be you know three, four states over. You just never know with me. I can you know, speak to that. You showed up. Yeah, you, the, yeah, you know. Blue. Yeah. So it, it was the hardest thing in the world to be able to accept it and just try to, to deal with all of it, uh, you know, on my on my level. And I know a lot of other performers, it's, just, it's the same type of thing. So, you know, um, again, uh, just trying to get through that. And now as, you know, everything's opened back up and, you know, we're starting to get out there. You have anxiety that hits. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and I, I, you know, never in a million years did I ever think I would ever have issues with that, with communicating or being around people or anything. Uh, you know, we were talking earlier. You walk in a store, somebody coughs. Now you freak out. <laughs> you talk. You, you just go. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's weird because then I just stand there at that point and I go. This is what we're, we're to at this point in time in life now. It's somebody new, coughs, somebody sneezes. Yeah, yeah, it's our new normal. Yeah. It's our new normal. You know, and the, the funny thing is you bring it up is that, um, you know, being away from people, not you're, you're a guy, again, for, uh, I, I followed you before I ever met you. I tell everyone that listens to me, if there's one person that I, quote unquote, idolize in the field and I would love to work with, you would be the number one person on that list 10 times out of 10 and meeting you and getting to know you and hang out with you some, you are an outgoing guy. I mean, when, when we have our conventions, how many people say to us, I'm John Zaffis' dance partner. I'm like, you <laughs> and everybody else at that party <laughs> are John Zaffis' dance partner. So you're, like you said, you're a guy who's out there. You do the college tour lectures yeah. In the fall, all the time, you're yeah. out there doing your events. You're working on cases. You just told me you're starting to get back into doing cases now. How does that feel going into people's homes and stuff now? Uh, I've done I, I've done several so far. Um, I'm still wearing my mask. I'm vaccinated, but um, I think it, it, it's so funny when you're talking and everything. You you just worry and you you. 
you get concerned, you know, you don't want anybody catching anything. You don't want anybody, you know, um, having any type of issues or something, you know, uh, related to it. So it's something that's a constant that I think we're, we're all still just trying to work through. Yeah. But again, I, it, you know, I just get, uh, very uptight, you know, and I'm like, okay, got to, got to do it. Got to push forward now and, uh, just get back out there. I thought, um, just going down and, uh, just hanging out at a couple of, uh, uh different things was going to be able to help relax me, but it took me time. It yeah. still took me, it took me that time to just finally, you know, let it go a little bit. And again, I think one of the hardest things is right at this point in time when people are together and, oh, I'm vaccinated. Oh, and I'll go, oh, okay. And another person will look at you. Well, I'm not taking it. I don't want it. You stand there and go, ah! yeah. What do you, what are you, yeah. What are you supposed to do? Right. So, you know, and with me, with my humor and I'm just like, okay, fine. I'm getting a fire extinguisher and filling it up with Lysol, and I'm just going to shoot it at people. Yeah. That's all. Well, that's, that's what was saying, <laughs> we were talking beforehand. It's like if people had flamethrowers and they said, well, you, I'm not you, vaccinated. You torch like, people. <laughs> Maybe God. <laughs> you know? So I don't know if you did it, but I found myself, and, and we're going to get on topic and talk about paranormal stuff in, in a little while here. So I found myself, like, watching, like, TV shows or movies where people were together, like, at concerts or even like scenes of New York City where people like, you know, the old days, quote unquote. And during the pandemic, you're like watching that go. And that was our life. That was that was normal. We yeah. can't do that anymore. Isn't that the weirdest thing on the planet that all of a sudden we just can't be around people? Now, was- one of the things I wanted to do to do and I was too petrified to do it when New York City was shut down. I just wanted to walk in New York City during the day when there was no one there. That was one thing that I wanted to do, but I was too afraid to do it. Well, we were driving to different places because we were still doing things here and there. And one of the Uh things that we're going to talk about, the Creeper Gallery, we were still going to the Creeper Gallery during the heart of the pandemic. It was like the zombie apocalypse. Highways were empty. Nobody was out. We got pulled over by the cops because we were the only car out there at night. Huh? He was just like, what are you doing out here? And we coughed on him and then we drove away. No. Just to- <laughs> John showed him his uh, equipment. <laughs> he to see my equipment, which I thought was kind of strange, but I'll do whatever I got to get out of a ticket. So, I showed him. Uh, so anyway, let's get into um, the interview here. Um, a lot of people don't know or they a lot of people do but a lot of people don't that you are the nephew of ed and lorraine warren who everybody knows now because of the conjuring movies and all these books and at what age did you really start getting exposed to kind of the paranormal and and kind of like getting out there and was it with them or was it because of them or or both actually actually both you know, when I was 16 years old, when I had the sighting of the transparent, very tall figure at the, the foot of my bed, and it shook its head back and forth, uh, and I ran downstairs and I was telling my mom about it. And she goes, did it say or do anything? I go, no, it just stood there and shook its head back and forth. <coughs> <coughs> no, I don't have COVID. Uh <laughs> <laughs> If I do, I'm going to be in rough shape. But anyhow. Hey, this will be your last interview. I'll be famous. See, there you go. There you go. Um, God forbid. (laughs) But um, went down, told her, and she said, well, that was my father. And I go, well, Ma, how do you know that was your father? She goes, Johnny, you don't remember him. He was a very stern man. He passed away when I was four years old, and he would always shake his head back and forth. Well, a few days afterwards, my grandmother had passed away and she lived with us. And that really got me going. Now, a lot of people, uh, more people know it today than they did before. My mother and Ed were twins. But they were, yeah, yeah, they were twins, but they were night and day. You said ghost to my mother, she'd cry. You say ghost to Ed and he'd go where? So, you know, it, you know, so then I went up and I was telling Ed about the story and everything and you know we just we just sat there and we talked about it for a little bit and he goes well what do you think and i go 
I don't know. I said, I think it was your father that came to visit me. Yes, that's what your sister said. And, you know, that's when I started really getting into things. I would go visit different locations that were around, just poking around with things. But then when I was 16, too, because they only lived 20 minutes north okay, from us. They were, close. they were very close. And my mom would always cook family dishes to say, bring them up to my brother. Well, Long and behold, I would do that, and they began ready to go someplace. So sometimes I jump in the car with them, and go. To, you know, I seen an exorcism one time just off the cuff. But how bizarre uh, is that? Again, yeah, you you're know, talking about that like that's normal. That's your normal. But like anybody else, would be like they go over their aunt and uncle's house. They're going to get some pizza or whatever. You're going and yeah, <laughs> you're going. Yeah. With, hey, God, we're going to an exorcism, Johnny. You want to come? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Then there was one other time too that I was. Um, I went to go drop off pierogies. That was their big thing, pierogies and uh, potato pancakes. But anyways, um, and they were trying to get out into the car. And I says, oh, come on with us. We're just going down. So we were, it was maybe not even 10, 15 minutes from their house. And I watched them. He was doing things. He had incense burning. Lorraine was outside sprinkling salt around it. It was a little cottage house near the lake. And um, they did this whole thing and everything. And I was like, what the freak are they doing? You know, I, and I was just amazed by the whole thing. But anyhow, and, but, but, but and I, prior to that, Ed didn't like sit down and have conversations with you about like stuff that he did and him and Lorraine were involved in. I mean, you weren't kind of like, Where? you know, sitting with him at different times and just he wouldn't talk about this stuff like openly with you when you were. Oh, he did with everybody. Okay. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Easter, Christmas, and everything? You waited for the freaking ghost stories. Yeah, you know, that's what we, that's no, that what. That must have been, what a family gathering. I that was always, you know. That would have been a reality show right there. Yeah, right there, there, right there. And, it's, you know, there was, there was me and four of my other cousins. And we used to just wait for, you know, them to come over because we knew he'd be talking about ghost stories. Lorraine would be with everybody else talking about the kid, you know, doing the, the family stuff and everything. And we would sit there and just listen to him talk about the stuff. So, you know, yeah, prior to that, you know, I used to, you know, hear him talk about, you know, the different things. And he would tell you, he would just tell you ghost stories. But how did your mom feel about you going with them? Did she ever say, I, you know, it's not safe or I don't really want you to get mixed up in that? What she her? did not want me getting involved with this because she was terrified of it. Right. Because they grew up in a haunted house. Okay. So, yeah, and that's it, 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 totally. Wait, your mom did and, and Ed? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they grew, uh, and their oldest brother, Frankie, all of them uh, had grown up in a haunted house. So, yeah, the, old, the oldest brother, Frankie, would always say he didn't know what the hell it was all about. And my mom and Ed, you know, uh, were petrified, you know, at that point as being kids. But that's what led Ed getting involved with it. And and it scared, it scared my mother. She wanted nothing to do with that. But as things you know, started evolving and, and moving forward with a lot of it. He would talk to me and, you know, just ask different things. And I think, you know, after, you know, just doing different things, what used to shake my mother more up than anything was, you know, when I was 17 or 18, I wouldn't come home to the next day. There were, there were several different times that they'd go to investigate and I would go with them and stay overnight. Now you got to remember, we didn't have cell phones or anything back then. So you, you just be popped around. And uh, she used to get so shook by that. And when I was, I, I think it was 21 or 22 is when I re really wanted to understand what the demonology end of it was. Now, mind you, by this time frame, I've already seen, you know, an exorcism, a Buddhist exorcism, deliverances, shamans, just, just randomly by going with them and witnessing some of these things. Oh but again, that's what intrigued me. And, uh, made me start really thinking about it. And I'm going, all these different belief systems believe in these things. And they have all these different rituals. And I got exposed to some of that, that it just opened my mind up to look at things from a different perspective. And, you know, when I could still remember the day, you know, the, one of the best things that came out of this was being isolated and being able to walk around because it made me start to remember a lot of things. I have a tendency to block everything out. It, 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 that's just how I operate. I've always been like that. But a lot of the different stories and things come back to mind. 
And uh, fortunately, you know, uh, I think it was meant to be that way so that some of the things got recorded. And um, just thinking about it, I still remember I walked in the back door of their house. I was 21, 22, give or take. And Lorraine was at the kitchen sink. And I put down the plate. It had uh, the, I, I want to say it was stuffed cabbage that day. But anyhow, and I put it down and everything. And I, and I go, you know, where's uncle, uh, you know, my uncle. And she goes, well, he's downstairs. Why, dear? I go, well, I think I want to learn more about all this demonology shit. So I got to talk to him. Whatever she had in her hand, she dropped into the sink. Oh, and as long as I can remember her was going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And, and, and she starts oh, screaming. And 21, 21, 22. And she goes, talk to him, talk to him, went downstairs, and we got into this long, in-depth conversation, John, about it. And, you know, it just it, it, everything and anything you could think about, he was talking about. And he goes, and he goes, and what do you think, kid? And I go, I'm not worried about it. I still can remember this. He leaned forward. He goes, I am. You are my blood, and I don't want to have to deal with my sister if something happens to you. Oh, I could imagine. So, so hold on. I got a quick question for you involving this whole thing. And it sort of ties into, you know, you and your beliefs and all that other stuff. What kind of protection do you use when you go into a case or, you know, to work with object, whatever? Because a lot of people believe in a lot of different things. Right. What do you believe in? What do you use? Okay. What I believe in, I believe in the power of prayer. Okay. I use holy water. I use sea salt. I do believe in God. You know, again, um, with this, I'm a very analytical person when dealing with a lot of these different things. And what I mean by that is if I'm dealing with somebody that's Jewish, I'm not going to bring a priest in there. <laughs> you know, if I'm dealing with somebody that has no belief system whatsoever, you know, a key factor is I'll explain things to them. They have to make the de decision on what they want to do from a spiritual perspective. Right. But now from John Zaffis's, you know, perspective, I believe in doing prayers and bindings. I believe very strongly in the power of prayer, the unity and the pulling together. I believe that, you know, that works. There's a lot of strength in it. But I also believe in a lot of the old world methods, you know, again, predating uh, uh, a lot of things as we look at things when it comes into organized religions. Right. You know, I uh, got to remember, we deal with deities, we deal with jinn, we deal with de devils and demons. So with this, I think you have to keep an open mind when trying to comprehend what we're dealing with. And that is probably one of the best and most unique things I walked away with from being around my uncle. Now, he, when he would teach, you know, it, it wasn't like you know okay ed you know explain all this to me that isn't what he would do he would just throw you in the thrust of the fire wow and then i so, would ask so you 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 asked to learn about demonology what was that well at that did? point at, uh, during the conversation he had made recommendations on several different books to read okay. which i did do and then you know a lot of uh, things that would get discussed or we would talk about would be like trial and error is the best way I could describe it to you. Hmm. You know, again, um, believe it or not, John, I was an extremely shy kid. Uh, yeah, when, when growing up, I did not like talking to people. I, I just didn't like, even family, I didn't like being around them. I'm the same way. My, my, my family would always call me an introvert. They yeah. Were, you know, at gatherings, I was always over there while everybody else was... Yeah, I had like four or five of my cousins. We grew up together. We're all in the same age bracket, and that was it. Anything else, I was very, I would get very, you know. But anyhow, um, with some of it, he would let me experience different things to see how I was going to react. Then he would talk about it. Now, as time started going on, you know, when he would come over to visit my mom and my dad and stuff like that, you know, he would have their, he would come and sit and talk to me. But it was always, it, it, it was strange. And I, I would 
always be taken back by the conversations. He would be talking about the paranormal. You have to remember they were old world. Right. You know, that, that was their belief system. That's how they grew up. And I could take it now and I look at different things the way uh, he, he would talk about it and go, that's what he meant. That's what he meant by certain things. But he would always ask me afterwards, what did you think? And I would tell him a lot of times what I would think. He would actually tell me, well, okay, why do you think it that way? And then I'd be like, I don't understand. Yeah. You know, it took, yeah, you know, it would take me time to comprehend and understand things. That's why when people say, well, what was it like growing up with Ed and Lorraine? I go, I don't know. It was my aunt and uncle and they chased ghosts. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> I, I that's, that's how I viewed yeah, them. You know, but, but you know what's weird about that real quick? I mean, like he's saying, though, there are people who's like mother, like their their parents own a funeral parlor. You just take or, it from or their, is. You grew up with to it. To them, yeah. That's it, the norm. It, that's life. the norm. They're, they're, nothing... They don't look at it as, yeah. this is like, what do you mean? But I, yeah, I, I have to put, this. you have to know something, John Zappas. John does not believe in demons. No, I don't. I'm oh, not I really, know that. I'm not a real religious person, so and, I, I find the concept of demons to be really and I really tell him, tough to... And I try to tell him that that's because he hasn't come across it, and thank God, because when you do, you know it, and there's no question. There, there, it's, it's something unlike an unfriendly spirit as what they've experienced. But, okay, you know, just, okay. Judaism. Think about if you think about it from the Judaism. I know, you know. Again, they don't believe in devils and demons per se. They believe in spirit, and the spirit is very, very negative and can do, you know, a lot of perspectives. That's why John. A lot of times, when you would say things to me like that, what do I do? I smile at you. I know. And I would never. I do not. My job or my thing in life isn't to criticize someone or judge them because of what they do or what they believe in. That's not what it's about. I, I don't view anything that way. I just don't. I never will. So, again, it's like, okay, fine. You know, one of these days, yeah, like Chris is saying, you come up against something, I know you're going to blow up my phone and just be going back and forth and go, okay, I think this is what you were talking about. And I'll go, yeah, think. <laughs> And I try to explain to him, too, that when you do come across something like that, it leaves a mark, a stain on you. You, you, and you don't forget it. it. No. You don't, you don't get over it. No. So, so real quick, people are saying that they, they can't hear us. I mean, if you can't hear it. I know people are saying to go back out and come in, but uh, some are saying they can hear us. Some are saying they can't, but people are saying go back out and come back in, and then they can hear just fine. So... Um, I'm hoping you guys can hear us because John can hear us, right? You hear us just fine. Yeah, I'm hearing you clear. Chris Sanders says he I can hear us all. Okay, so, I did a so, test. So we're I good. can hear. We're so. good. Okay, so um, I want to get into a million different things. And I know people are asking questions that I'm going to ask you. Uh, let's go to the first one right off the bat before we get into other. Ouija boards. What yes. Are, what is your opinion? Is a Ouija board a dangerous thing? Can you bring something in that wasn't there? What is your opinion on the Ouija board? Okay. I put the Ouija board in the category of every other tool that is out there. Uh, you know, people that read tarot cards, people that do spirit communication, people that, uh, you know, uh, do EVPs or anything. This is all spirit communication. We can deal with individuals that play with the Ouija and they bring something in. I never believe it's the actual tool. It's the individuals. We're the catalyst. We bring the spirit in. Thus, we end up dealing with people that have had some major, major bad experiences playing with the Ouija board. Right. Yeah. So, again, you know, I look at it the same as anything else. Hollywood is the one that actually took the Ouija board and <laughs> brought it to the forefront. And, you know, again, it... it it is what it is. Now, um, have I ever sat down and played a Ouija board? Uh -uh, I'm still too scared. <laughs> you really have never tried it? I have never played a Ouija. Get out of here. No. Oh, we got to no. do that. You and I no. got to do that. <laughs> yeah, no freaking way. If uh, no. the demon comes through, I'll be the first to tell you, John, you're right. Now handle it. 
Oh, oh yeah, that. Thanks. Then I have to be, be calling up the freaking Pope to help me out. But you know, again, I've been around where people have used it. I've watched it being used. I'm intrigued by it because I view it as a tool. Me too. That you know, other people you know uh, use or use to open up the doors for spirit communication. But I agree with you. I don't think it's any different than a spirit box, a digital recorder. I think if it's you're openly tool. communicating and, like you said, opening that door in any way, using any key. But like somebody just said, instead of calling it a Ouija board, a spirit board. Spirit, yeah, I whatever. mean, it's kind of... Well, they do call... Yeah. Connotation off of it. I'm not yeah. Ouija and saying spirit board. So yeah. let, let's talk about... We're going to go all around the board here. Um, okay, wait a minute. Before we jump off that, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this one. Okay most recent acquisition that had come into the museum is the creepiest freaking Ouija board I have ever seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But unfortunately right at this point, I can't bring it to the forefront because th th the situations that tie in with that, but it's probably out of the 50, 60 Ouija boards I have. It's the only one I know of that, uh, Animal blood, human blood, and several other types of things were used to create the letters and create certain things. Are you uh, kidding me? Hardcore. Hardcore. Holy sugar. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I did, too, because I looked at it and I oh, went. A sick mind. Well, not really, John. You got to remember different practices, oh, okay. yeah, different yeah. things believe. Yeah. Okay, D to, to get a, a better clarification, do you realize how many famous artists actually would use their blood or yeah. their urine? Yeah. Okay, same thing. See, once you, a lot of times, once you look at things from the other perspective oh, of it, the yeah, you're right. there yeah. you go. Perspective and, and yeah. the kind yeah. of person you and how you were raised, like you said, from the old country, it, that all factors into, like there are people out there, not that this is on topic, that, that are hunters and have no problem doing that and catching and killing and eating. I wasn't raised that way, wasn't around that sort of thing, totally mm -hmm. different than anything I could fathom. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I get what you're saying. So this Ouija board, let's let's jump into it because we're talking about haunted objects, that's where we're going. Where did, how did it come to you? Uh, came Why do you have it? I have it due to a mutual clergy friend that it had something to do with his family and it just got involved where it dealt with people very, very high up practicing things on a negative level. Whoa. So it's a, uh, there, there's a whole world of this stuff, John, that I deal with that I very seldomly go into depth with just for the simple fact of it just needs to be left alone. But since we were talking about it, I thought it'd just be cool to 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 share that part of it. So, Well, let's get into the theory of, of haunted objects and what your beliefs are and everything. Because we now delve into more haunted objects than we did before, and I'm getting more exposure to them, I've heard other people's kind of impressions of kind of what they think is going on with the object and how the mm -hmm. attachment is made i guess mm -hmm. um i've talked to mediums i've talked to other people a lot of people believe that when you have this object that either the energies of the people who owned it before or were around it before it could sometimes imprint themselves on it or other people believe that it's almost like a channeling thing you have this object that may have been around or used for something and when you're referring to the memory of the family and what happened, that it is almost like a channeling portal that you're opening up to call those spirits in. What do you believe as far as a, a haunted object? Is it different with every object? Oh, no, I'm in, agree I'm in agreement with everything you just said, because all of that could be a factor. Okay. Because a at the end of the day, or not really at the end, of, I shouldn't say at the end of the day, we deal with energy. Right. And energy could never be destroyed. Right. Now, can an item be possessed? No, I, d I do not agree with that. Can it have energy and spirit attached to it? Yes. Just so, like so I believe. You don't believe that a demon can be in an object? That's different. Okay. Okay, you're asking a totally different question there. Either you have a haunted item or... 
you have a vessel that somebody puts something okay. in with okay. intent and purpose. That's totally different. Okay. And I'll handle that totally and differently. And that's good because that's where the no, confusion no. comes you're in right. for a lot and of people. Correct. He's 100% right about that. And I, I didn't, you're right, I didn't make the distinguish, I didn't distinguish between the difference because I have heard of items and handled items that, like you said, the intent of what was put in them mm -hmm. was nothing but bad juju. I mean, right. I've seen my first time in my life, I was exposed to a cursed box and, 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 uh, and out of curiosity, naivete, I opened this thing. You didn't yes, I remember it, when you did that. Oh, my God, John. I, I'm, I'm a seer believer, and I never believed in curses before. I thought they were kind of like hooey and, you know, whatever. And I saw firsthand the power of a curse and a cursed item, and it was mm -hmm. scary. Scary to know that something could have that you know, put inside of it and, and, mm -hmm. and, and carry that like a bomb just waiting for, yeah. you know, some idiot <laughs> yeah. to go. What, what, one of the best, the best ways to always uh, view things and to look at things when uh, dealing with the haunted items, we have things that are, you know, haunted. Let's just say, you know, uh, grandma's bracelet. Right. And, you know, we especially we know how, you know, people were years ago with their items. Right. They were very, you know, th th that would meant the world to them because they never had anything prior. Like, yeah, were, like depression, people that were around or they, they yeah. didn't throw things away. They, nothing. They, they knew nothing yeah. because they had nothing. So they yeah. cherished everything. Absolutely. Their whole lives. Yeah. You know? And then they raised their kids to be that way, too. Mm hmm. But the, and then you have the items that are done with intent and purpose. That's ritual items, or you know, some of the bottles or the boxes that you know, uh, uh, spirit is deliberately uh, summoned and put in there, and definitely it's put into place. Once that seal is broken, you know, things are going to occur and things are going to happen. Yeah. Do, do I believe very strongly in that? D absolutely. Do I believe in curses? Absolutely. These things occur. They happen. And, you know, uh, when you watch things unfold, and when it, a, a key thing that I look at uh, with a lot of people, you could tell instantly talking to somebody on the phone whether ha they're having a genuine experience or they just got done watching a movie. You, you yeah. could tell. A yeah, yeah, I mean... You know, Satan isn't going to be coming up through the floorboards. The windows aren't all getting blown out. I mean, you know, There's when people, from the walls. yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's far and few in between that those scenarios do take place. Do these things happen? Yes, but it's far and few in between. So with a lot of it, I look at it, you know, uh, differently um, with respect. So I always, I always, you know, tell people you have to respect things right. once you start challenging things and you open up pandora's box you better be prepared yeah, because right. you don't know what you're going to get hit with because 99 percent of the time you don't know exactly what you're dealing with exactly. yeah but people mistakenly think they do well that's, the that's how a lot of people get themselves into jams and you know it, it it's hard in I understand it. It's like twofold. You know, we want the proof. We want to know if these things exist. We want to have the experiences. And, you know, once we do, as long as you're walking away with a lesson learned. Right. That's the important element with these categories and, you know, experiencing these things. If you learn from it. But if you keep repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. You're on your own. So you have, and again, I don't know how many people watching know this. You have a plethora of haunted objects that you've collected or that were sent to you through. Years. Oh, it, 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 it's like hoarders exploded over here. So so this is, your, <laughs> you have a museum filled with haunted objects. Now, when I, when I, I know that about you and I know that the Warrens have, you know, Annabelle and, and those types of things. How do you 
are, are the objects in your home? Let me ask you that first. No, uh, none of the objects are in the house. They are uh, in a big building that I put up on the property. Okay. And all the the things are basically housed in, well, there's actually two barns on the property. So again, uh, the, the big barn, you know, I put up because that was my dream to do tours and teach classes and, you know, to be able to do things like that. And as time goes on, you find out that, you know, Sometimes your neighbors aren't happy about those types of things. <laughs> so, you know, um, right now, over the past several years, the, uh, the, the it's just unbelievable the amount of accumulation I have. I can imagine. So you've never, ever, ever brought one of these objects into home? I've, I've had things in the house walking through the house. Okay. I originally had my office down in the basement where I had some of the items. Yes, I remember. Yeah, but they, it was I did not have the hardcore things down okay. there. Okay. I always kept them out. You know, so, I always had a, another them, smaller barn on the property. Do you, do you, um, you acquire them from cases and locations? Some yes. Of objects? Yes. Okay. Yes. There's only one object that's in the museum that I ended up giving a gentleman money for, and that was a pump organ, because the poor man would have went belly up. Okay. You know, he would have lost things, and he was from a mutual friend, and his mutual friend had told me, John, he's going to go belly up, you know, and I felt bad for him, and I actually had given him some money for the organ. And again, I think that there's, I can't think of anything else that I've ever purchased. Right. But people so, send you items as well, right? Some people oh, say, continuously. Continuously. Continu yeah. I love it when they put it on my next door neighbor's porch. <laughs> I get. The, he'll call me up and he'll go, there's a freaking package up here. Get it off oh, my I freaking know. porch. I, I and, I go, and I'll tell him, I go, well, it doesn't mean it's haunted. He goes, I don't want to know if it's haunted or not. I would have like the big pool cleaning stick with the net on it. And I'd be like, you know doing one of these and lunging it over your fence or whatever. It's kind of like uh, watching people in a pandemic catapult. with a mask and everything. They'll go out there with a full body suit and everything and just like, here, get it off. Go away. Yeah. So I know people send you these objects. Um, when you when you get an object, what what's the process? Do you take it out to the barn? Do you do some kind of protection thing before oh, even... Yes, the there, there, there's a hole. What story behind Okay, there, there, there's several different methods in the smaller barn is where I put things to, as I call, cure. There, there's a lot of different prayers and bindings I do over items. I also believe very strongly in putting uh, items out in the direct sunlight to be able to help neutralize energy. There, there's a lot of methods of things I do. Then they can be moved into the big barn where I put them on display. Then again, there are bindings and prayers that I have. A lot of my religious and spiritual friends do over them. So it, it's it's a continuous thing. Yeah, but did you ever get one or two that just didn't take right away and you noticed that you walked into that barn and there was an energy from something? Oh, absolutely. Had? Yeah, John. Yeah. Uh, did you ever get like physically affected? Do you ever find yourself getting, even in some of the cases you do, like I never, again, I, I'm, I'm, I have to be exposed and, 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 and go through things before I kind of believe that it's real. I, I have been physically affected, emotionally affected by things and mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to, again, is, do you protect yourself from that all the time with the same type of binding and just to make sure that even... Oh, ab it, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, have you ever had an instance where you felt like you definitely had or someone tell you no an attachment just did you know that something got got to me and is attached to me have you ever gone through something like that i i have never been to the point where i per se could say that i felt that something was attached right i have activity that occurs around me Right. I have people tell me that there's things around me, and I'm going, well, yeah, with the shit I do, I'm going to. So, you know, again, that, that that's the nature of our work. You know, again, um, I, I'm an extremely, extremely spiritual person. 
and that's your protection. And that is, you know, one of my modes that I use, I believe very strongly in the power of prayer. I believe very, very strongly in calling upon the angels. I believe that they're, they're definitely around to be able to help protect us and to be able to watch out. I do not have any qualms when I'm with any of my spiritual people, Native American, Buddhist, Rabbi. I don't care. You want to pray over this old butt? Please do it. I could use all the prayer, all the power of protection. You know, I accept it. I accept the positive. You know, uh, uh, I believe very strongly in that from so many different perspectives. Yeah, but you're right about that. I mean, it, it is a cumulative thing to where if your beliefs are there and your energies are in such a state where you're protecting and, and preventing whatever, and mm -hmm. then you have other people, their faith, their beliefs, and the same intent. It's the power of it many. Is, yes, like you said, it's a barrier to protect yeah you know, even fortify even more. That's exactly I, I what it think. is. It's fortifying. See, because I'm not religious, I don't go in with that same mindset or that mm -hmm. same protection. You have faith. I, I, I have faith, but I'm not, again, I don't believe the way he believes with the prayer and the power. I don't have that. So I go in as an open vessel. Mm -hmm. Whatever's here, whatever happens, that's my mindset. I want to, you know, and involve myself fully. And there is, I'm sure, a danger to doing that. You know, when you work, the, it's like I'm on the high wire and they're, you know. <laughs> and that's and that's where I come in. I really do, yeah. How dare you? I really like kind of try to contain him and my other team member who goes a little too far. I'm bringing it back <laughs> in and kind of like, yeah. Because she instigated when we were somewhere with a haunted object and I ended up having something literally and uh, trying to explain it to them reach in and literally grab my lungs and squeeze them where I couldn't breathe. Well, see, again, uh, a lot of people have to understand, you know, the, the perspectives of it. You know, it can affect you mentally. It can affect you physically. It goes for the areas that are most vulnerable. Yeah. And the majority of the time, that would be on the psychological end with most of us. Right. You know, and it will hit, you know, with that. So, again, that, you know, it, you know, I understand it and I realize it. I could talk to somebody till I'm blue in the face. Like I remember one day, Chris and I sat with you in Dunkin' Donuts. And, yeah, you keep looking each way, buddy. <laughs> Anyhow, but, again, There's what, what the... <laughs> you know, the, the hey, important. I haven't talked to the guy in years. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you know, we, the, the the fact of it is, as long as you you get the information, you know, out there, it's up to you what you decide to do. Right. Yeah. You know that that, and that's how. Free will. Yeah, free will, and that's how but, I view things and look at things. But I I am so curious about. Um, I can't remember what uh, documentary I was watching, but you were part of it, and uh, um, Malachi Martin was part of it. There was a whole hostage of, of the devil. That's the one, and uh, it was they were talking about exorcisms and things of that nature. Yeah, uh, you've seen them. You've you've taken part in them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes. What is that even? Is it anything like what we see? on like in the movies the, or anything like that i, mean, I have is it longer, uh, shorter does it go on for days i mean it can um it depends on the uh, on the circumstances depends on the, 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 each situation is different right um you know i've been where i have seen a person levitate Good you know on. not up and spin around but they levitated up now when I'm involved with doing, uh, I don't do exorcisms. I don't do a, a lot of the different things because I think that's up to a spiritual person to do right. that. So therefore, I go into my mode of a praying and assisting in doing what I need to do right. to be able to help out. But, you know, I've seen a person's eyes change. I've seen a person levitate. I've seen burn marks come out on people. Oh my God. You know, does this happen all the time? No, it's far and few in between right. when these things do occur. So, but they do occur, they do happen, and it's what I call true possession. 
the watch true that. thing. Okay. Let me let me ask you a question too, because we never really talked about this either. Um, again, this is in the field. What I think that um, we we almost got involved in a show where uh, uh, like a psychiatrist would have been part of the process mm -hmm. just to counsel before and after or you know be part of and i think that's really important because you've been doing this a long time and you've been involved in so many different cases um there is a, a mental aspect sometime to the client aspect where some things aren't paranormal but there's other issues going on with the individual with the family that isn't related to anything spirit related going on in the house it's not spiritual but, right exactly yeah. what, how, do, how do you handle something like oh that? uh uh doesn't matter what the circumstances are whether we're dealing with a legit uh paranormal case or a psychological case my recommendations are that seek counseling join a group it, you know again these are very important elements you know for people to be able to figure out you know they they have to come to terms with certain things because even if it's a mental issue sometimes with individuals if they believe casper the ghost is in their house it's yeah. in their house you better believe yes. it. okay so you know and i'm not a psychiatrist so but being around it you know for the length of time i have you know that is an important element gotta remember too uh, a lot of uh you know people take a lot of medications for different things it alters them thus we got to take that into consideration a lot of factors come into play when uh investigating or dealing with the case and but, also the fact is is the trauma of a haunting oh or like the PTSD. Yeah. that has to yeah. go to me that's because when when i suffered what i went through growing up i actually by the time i was 17 i was suicidal I mean, mm -hmm. and, and this is something that I don't think really gets touched on or talked about when we're dealing with people who do deal with hauntings and not for a short period of time, but for a long period of time. It, it's very traumatic. I think more so today, there's a lot of therapists and uh, psychiatrists that are more open. They're uh, more accepting today than they ever were yeah. because so many of them i know you know again i mean the you know they're up here you know on the scale for their reputations and everything but i always love it when i talk to them and they'll go i can't prove or disprove this but my client is convinced thus and i will help them through that and tell them and give them suggestions you know on what to do you know to try and you know do that because i think one of the best things for therapy with people that are traumatized from the paranormal is a group setting yeah you know and to talk about it and to bring the things to the forefront there's nothing wrong with that no nothing isolation is a horrible thing and it just sets you up to be more victimized by any oh absolutely that's going on yeah that's what it likes yeah yeah I, i'm looking at uh John is going to show us some haunted items. That's why it, people are mentioning the questions and, and a lot of people are scrolling by me in comments. I'm trying to kind of scan through them, but I'm also looking at the clock here and we're trying to cover a lot of different subjects to kind of give you guys, you know, as much as we can of John while we got him, you know, on. Okay. Here. I'm so, going to, I'm going to show three items. Three items. Yeah. And I wouldn't even let John know because I, I, like I, I wanted to no, torment no, them. I wanted to torment them. All right. <laughs> I'm going to show this one statue here. It's the, a little plastic statue. It's a Virgin Mary. This comes from the haunting in Connecticut. Get out of here. When the exorcism was being performed on the home, there were three priests there. They had put a lot of the relics throughout the house. This was placed on the mantle uh, in the living room. And it was August, so it wasn't lit or anything. The priest went to go retrieve it, and he screeched. We ran into the room, and he pointed to the Mary, and he goes, look, the hands are burnt off of it, or melted oh. off of it. Oh, my God. He would not touch it. He wanted nothing to do with it. And he just left it there. So for many, many years, we none of us ever knew what happened to it. Carmen had kept it. 
And one year, her and I were at a campus lecturing. She goes, I have something I want you to put it, put it, put in that, that barn of yours. And I went, okay. And she took it out. She opened it up and she showed it to me. And I went, we often wondered what happened to that. She goes, John, I've had it all these years. She said, I don't think it's evil. Right. She said, but I just think, you know, and I went, you know, I was very honored that she gave it to me. And it's one of those types of things, like I said, if you just look at you could see it. And I can understand how the priest, you know, really got wigged out when he looked at it. Yeah, and, you know, that's the thing, too. Again, like we were talking about before, like that item bear witness to lots of stuff. And Correct. All that energy, it is possible that, you know. You don't attach right to it, and something's there. Well, look at yeah. what and, happens and, in the atmosphere when you have two fronts that hit together. Yeah, but but people, you know, you attribute stuff. a lot of hauntings to buildings. You know, buildings are haunted because somebody died in it, or God forbid, a murder, or blah blah blah. But objects that are in those buildings can mm -hmm. also absorb that energy too, and be just as affected as the dwelling. You know what I mean? Well, to me, you know, when you're looking at uh, any type any type of religious item and it has the power behind it to do something you're dealing with something powerful yeah because yeah. those are you know blessed and you know a, a lot of things are done over them but well, that was that was the thing with donna she she said she mentioned it to you those sensors that were used in exorcisms yes that one of them belonged to father malachi now nope. again yeah that that's going to be i her and i had a, an in-depth yeah, they got bad juju on them john man i was around those things and there's something not good about them at all right again with them you have to remember those uh uh th there isn't a church that doesn't have that they burn the incense in it right, right. they use it in masses they use it in all kinds of different things. Right. So for, yes, to say that it has bad juju with it, that's a good possibility. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Right. But those particular th uh, items, though, are very seldomly a personal item that a clergy member would have okay. with them. Okay. They would The churches, yes. There's right. all different ones, all different sizes. Good possibility that Mal might have used that at one point in time on a case. We can't rule that out. So again, that's um, just so you know. Now I'm coughing after John passed. Yeah, COVID yeah, you. Wi-Fi. I've got Wi-Fi COVID now because of John's yeah. coughing before. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a good thing we all got the humor with that now. I'll tell you. Have to. I mean, we're I, talking, yeah. I know. After what we went through, I mean, come on. Well, the red, the running joke was we did Easter and we had 20 relatives over and that I have a wicked sense of humor with all of the family too. I was walking around with the meat thermometer. Ah. <laughs> and everybody goes, don't even think about it, pal. Oh, that is great. That is great. <laughs> but everybody was happy. And they kept saying, we're so glad to see your sick humor back. <laughs> I mean, but, again, just to see people out and about at the parks and different places, um, you know, just getting back to normal. We're seeing it in Jersey, you know, and it's just, you know, you're going to be out and about again, right? I mean, you're going to be... The college tours are kind of an iffy. You don't, you're not sure about that. Well, we're, um, you know, again, moving forward, we're uh, booking things. We just have to wait to see what's going to happen. Yeah, that that's all we could do, John. Any of us but, could but do I'll with be anything. More interested in getting back out there and, and doing, because you're already kind of out there doing some stuff, right? As far oh as yeah, you know. yeah. Um, again, you know, just moving forward, but right. very ca cautiously yeah. with right. me at this point. So oh, again, right. you know it. It is what it is. I don't know, you know what's going to happen in August, September, no, or not. We, none of us know. No. So we just have to take it, you know, yeah. like I say, I take it step by step. And, you know, they start closing things back down. The, the old man's back home locked in his barn again. I don't want to know nothing. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, but it, it's just, again... Yeah. He's going to have that pill Monday through Sunday pill thing kind of filled with that, all these that, different... That begs for me to ask you this question. Do you think, like what's being put out there, that the isolation that we have gone through has created more of awareness of the paranormal? Or, or do you think that it's actually created more of the paranormal? Both. I don't think we've seen anything yet. No. You, you have to remember, we're dealing with a whole new realm. Yeah. 
uh, we're dealing with people, you know, we're, we're, so many people are on the go. They're on the go. They're never in their apartment. They're never home. And then all of a sudden, they're locked in. They're starting to have experiences. They're starting to and have like things. They're vulnerable. Depression, anxiety, all Isolation. that stuff kind of, you know, lowers your vibration. And then if there is stuff around, guess what? It's good. Hey. That, 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 that's why our, doc, our doctors give us all happy pills and get us through it. But anyhow. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of like, I mean, Emma's over there. He's just kind of. So. Well, as you know, again, I, you know, I laugh about it and everything, but that anxiety yeah. has done a lot. We're in it. We're opening back up to that point now. And I just think, I don't know, and I can't explain it, but I think we went into another shift. Yep. Yep. And this is a long, prolonged uh, area that we're all dealing with at this point in time. I don't think we've seen anything yet. No. no. I, I, I really don't. This and is like coming out after the hurricane and seeing the wreckage. And we can only see what's in front of us, but we don't know the long-term effects. Yeah, because I do yeah. agree with you there on so many different levels. This pandemic. I mean, you know, John, I'm, de I'm dealing with people, uh, you know, that... Normally, you just wouldn't, yeah. you know, a very, you know, high like, power like type. Us, like us, huh? That's why you mean like us. That's why you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> we all know we all we, we, we know we're all out yeah, there. Right. So, but I mean, when you start dealing with, you know, high corporate people and, you know, uh, just the, the, the scale of people, yeah. you know, that are coming and talking to me about experiences they're having you know they've never experienced stuff like this and blah blah it, we're going into another realm i just know it there's yeah. no doubt in my mind that there's this big shift that's taking place all right so, so object number two let's see what else you got there oh i like that one <laughs> look at that bad boy he's even got like homemade that, shoes on and that one that one looks kind he of looks right, like a psychotic right Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. This is uh, a 1930s to 40s Humpty Dumpty. And uh, I've had a couple of different situations where people have collected them and they start to wreak havoc and people start to have different things happen. I have two that are very, they're from the 30s and 40s and both of them came from the same woman. She had like, she had like 30 to 40 of them. She would collect them. She, yeah. And she picked one up. It would be moved around. She freaked out over. She yelled at it one time, and it flew right off the shelf and bopped her. Oh she God. had this one. Uh -huh. She picked up again, and she found it moved around. She didn't even waste it. She packed it right up, and she sent it off to me. And I was on the phone speaking to her, typical New York City type person. And I go, will you please stop buying these freaking things? <laughs> goes, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And she goes, did it do anything? And I go, well, not yet. <laughs> I, I haven't some, seen it do anything. I had someone contact me when this is actually pandemic time. They they said that they were at some Native American, uh, you know, land or burial ground. And they were there with the family and the daughter picked up these rocks that she thought one of them was an arrow because of the way it was shaped. And they mm -hmm. brought them home and they said, Ever since we brought these things home, things have been happening. I, don't, mm -hmm. I told my daughter not to pick them up. Don't, you know. Oh, her whole personality changed. Yeah, she said her daughter's personality changed. She was outgoing, and now she's staying in a room, not talking to her friends. And I said to her, if that's what you believe, that those items, I said, get rid of them. Send them to me right now. Go down to the post office. Get them out of your house. Mm -hmm. Okay? I said, and I want you to call me tomorrow and let me know if it made any difference whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So she put them in the mail. They, I didn't have them yet, but I called her the next day. I said, how was last night? How? She said, totally different. Mm -hmm. Nothing going on here. She said, my daughter actually came out and she was talking. Now, I got the items and didn't really have any kind of experiences. I had them for a week. Mm -hmm. I brought them to Jane Doherty. You know Jane. Oh, yeah. I let yeah. Jane handle them and Jane kept them and said, I'll do what I need to do here, but mm -hmm. I'll take them and I'll keep them and cleanse them. But again... I don't know if it was placebo that just getting the items out kind of changed the mindset of what they may have believed mm -hmm. because they knew that they were somewhere. And But I didn't have any experiences whatsoever. But it's not like I don't believe them, but 
it was one of those weird things where, yeah, if like you said, with that Humpty Dumpty, if you have that thing and it's causing those kind of activity, you got to get rid of it. You got to find well, again, someone who's going to. Yeah. I mean, again, hands and deal with it. Yeah. I mean, thinking about that, you know, uh, uh, when it comes to rocks or, you know, uh, branches or different things that get removed from property. You got to remember, the, uh, uh, it's gonna it can hold on to energy, yeah, whether it's, it's Native American or anything whatsoever. You know, it's a mineral, so therefore it can hold on to the energy. I mean, I got a a, a walking stick that came from one of the most notorious haunted locations. And it was in several different homes, wreaked all kind of havoc. I've had it here for years, and I've never had a problem with it. But, why, but why do you think that is? Because you have the protection? or I, Sometimes I don't know. Right. Sometimes I, I can't give you a clear-cut answer why some of the items I have, you know, I have no experiences or anything. Then I'll have, you know, sensitive psychics or mediums come over, and they'll go near it, and they freak out, and they don't even know the story about it. See, but that's a good point. And I, I, do you have a little more time to talk? Yeah, go ahead, bud. You got that, it. That, that's a good point because we're going to go totally sidetracked here. But same type of thing that you're talking about. And Amityville is the perfect kind of case. But I'm not specifically talking about Amityville. I'm even talking about like different homes where um, there was even a case in New Jersey where a couple moved out, broke their lease because they were renting a house that they said was haunted. Mm -hmm. The landlord took them to court for breaking the lease involved the paranormal team that provided evidence of a haunting mm -hmm. and the landlord said i lived in that house nothing ever happened there mm -hmm. the people that moved in after them nothing, nothing happened, happened there. yep i think again if we're going to go down that rabbit hole do you think that certain people personalities they can i don't know what the proper word to use they could either trigger or activate what may be dormant okay it's what i call a perfect storm okay you can have a hundred year old house 10 families live there nothing happened one family moves in boom all hell breaks loose yeah. they move out other people move in nothing ever happens again yeah so again what what the the key element with a lot of this i deal with this continuously you know i think it, it, it's the, the energy of the individuals something could have been dormant in that home they could have brought something in you, sometimes you never know what exactly. is going to trigger a situation amityville uh, a haunting in connecticut two good examples you know where paranormal activity nothing happened after they had moved out so therefore you know you have to take a lot of that stuff into consideration when you deal with these cases and, and that's the really bizarre and strange thing about it. It's not like the 48 hours TV show or like some crime show where you could kind of sift through and say, you know, this is where no. it started. This is how it got there. This is where it ended. Mm -hmm. It's it really, there really is sometimes no way of knowing what the trigger was to make it start and to make it stop. And, and, and sometimes the even the people don't report that it followed them, but, is it still there dormant again? You know, well, the, okay, I would look at that as two. I would look at that as two two different uh, situations. If it followed them, then you're not necessarily dealing with a haunted house. You're dealing right, with a haunted person. person. Right. So then again, uh, again, I know people that have moved from house to house to house, yeah. and they've had activity. So I know then it's them. It's not necessarily the house, but. Haunted people are attracted to haunted property. So there is a very, again, where that element just pulls together and that attraction takes place. Energy attracts energy. There you go. And that's a great point because we talked about this before because we know a realtor who's a medium. Mm -hmm. and she'll cleanse the place. If she walks in, <laughs> and you do. Yes. And you oh, yeah. She'll cleanse it before the people move in. And I, I, I told her you should get a TV show because I love that <laughs> concept. But she, you're they right tried it and it didn't work, thing. but go ahead. But she said the same thing. She said that couple that may walk in there and say, we love this house. The energies there may right away whoop, whoop, attack yeah. and attract each other. And nice. like you said, now they're creating that storm that you talked about where yeah. stuff that well, the the frequencies, the vibration, whatever you want to call it. And then with mm -hmm. the other thing, like with John, when John 
first started getting into this and doing private cases, he always had a hard time understanding how could only, like say family of 10, how could only one person have experience and nobody else experience it, which was Big. my case growing up. And I explained to him, uh -huh. isolate you and that's, that's how right. it all starts and and he just never could. Yeah, that was in the beginning, again, that you would have seven people in the house and the one, the, let's say the mother was the only one seeing the things and getting scratched and getting, and I, the husband was sleeping right next to her. And I'm like, never have you even heard or no, he goes, it's not unusual. He tells me, but I haven't seen anything. And I'd go again, that would make me start leaning at least towards let's examine to see if there's any issues beyond the paranormal. Let's check the medicine cabinet. Let's interview further to see if we're not dealing with something other than well, I agree. I agree with doing that regardless, right. but it is not an unusual for having a family of 10 and only one person experiencing something. Right. Again, that it's, it's nine out of 10 times. That's the norm. Okay. And then eventually, you know, a lot of times then it will escalate where, you know, finally somebody else will start no. to experience something. And there you go, Chris, right. It builds. No. And once it gains that confidence, you know, once it's already worked through that one particular individual, then it will start to reach out. So that that's not an uncommon thing. You know, another common thing, too, that people don't even realize, sometimes with hauntings, just like what and Chris triggered my memory on this, sometimes it could take years for that to build. Before yeah. things are actually recognized or before, because sometimes I'll talk to people and, you know, I'll go, well, how long do you think that was happening? Oh, I don't know, six, seven years. I just never paid attention to it. So, again, another common thread when uh, uh, dealing with this and, and people having experiences. So that's not unusual. It's like a slow, invasive cancer that just starts <coughs> to grow and build until by the time you're aware of the, the damage is done. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to try to, if you want to answer, ask your questions now, start listing them. I'll try to, again, John's not going to stay on forever, but I'll, I'll try to get to them. I know that um, you guys have questions, but I'm trying to cover a lot of subjects here. Uh, so go ahead and post some questions now and I'll try to get I to them. I just want to know, with dealing with what you deal, you deal with and going out there with Ed and Lorraine, why in God's name would you open yourself for bringing haunted items do you know how that started? I was with the, it was a random situation. Went with them one day and they went to this woman's house. It was maybe 20 minutes away. She collected these little tiny collectible statues and it started moving around and she freaked out. So Ed at that point removed it and we were in the car him and Lorraine were in the front seat. He took the statue and threw it in the back seat. He goes, you want that? <laughs> and I can remember still to this day, I go, what the, what the hell am I going to do with that? <laughs> but do you know what he did? He made me think. Because back then, we didn't have the computers. We didn't have the, we had nothing. So what was I going to do? And he knew it. I was going to go get a couple of books on haunted objects, start reading up on them. And that's exactly what I did. He busted out laughing. And I go, I can't get over how many haunted items there are out there. And I go, you know, and he goes, oh, and I go like this haunted rocking chair. And he goes, uh-huh, that's over in Scotland. Anybody that sits in it dies. The Hope Diamond. Look at what that's done to people. Yeah. So, you know, and that's what triggered me. And got it into me. And what he would do would smile or he would start laughing. But I, I didn't know at that point what he was doing. Now I do. He knew he was. it was going to intrigue me enough to start researching it so to find out. Thing. Now, here, here's the crazy thing. When we the, the first year we were filming Haunted Collector, we filmed it for three years. They took that statue and it disappeared. They had They, they wanted to use it for one of the promos. They could not find what they did with it. I went nuts. And for the longest time, nobody could find it. Finally, when the show was done and over with, they were cleaning something out. One of my friends, thank God, because I became good friends with a lot of them, they go, oh, my God, we found the statue. And they shipped it right back to me. Wow. Yeah, it's about this big, and I got it downstairs in a, in a little container. I mean, again, it's not really 
anything of value. It was just the point of it. That's what got me started. The wow. trigger. So the trigger. So that, the see, trigger item. People are yeah. to see the third item. Uh oh. It walked away. <laughs> Humpty took it away. As we all know. Yeah, we like always that. hear about all the different statues, the masks, and the different things that come from different islands. What people have to remember, these are created to represent a lot of different deities. So therefore, there is definitely energy associated with that. Now, this is one of my creepier ones that I have. Do I necessarily think that a lot of these things could be in a situation that they're going to wreak a lot of havoc with individuals. I know people that collect masks and the statues and have no problems whatsoever. Certain people pick them up and they start to have problems with them. I have an entire wall with masks from, you know, different cases of different things I've worked on. But in the, in the different cultures, on the different islands, when they're carving them, they, it just represents different deities to them. Thus, they come into our lives, and that's when they could wreak havoc. So again, you know, uh, can I say that? Now, these are that's an item that's with intent and purpose that it was created, and yes, the energy will be associated with it. You got so, I again, saw one of these statues. I think it was like during a Ripley's Believe It or Not show. That um, I can't remember what country it's from, but the total purpose of the statue. Was people put nails in it, like to put a curse on someone or to mm -hmm. risk them harm? You would say what you wanted to, to, to curse the person and what, and then you'd boom, boom, boom. And this thing was a big statue that was just full of nails. Yeah. And I'm like, could you imagine the juju attached to that thing with all that bad intent cast well, upon? Th that's the whole thing and right there, the intent. Hammering in that nail just yeah. gives it even more. Uh, people are asking what your opinion is of people that want to collect haunted objects and have them in their homes today is so fashionable uh <laughs> i you know i i laughed because when we created haunted collector i said man am i taking a chance with this going out there i said people are going to shred me which they did but anyways uh now everybody's collecting everybody's got the biggest collections and you know i, I always tell people just please be careful what you bring in it's the only thing I could say, you know, because people are going to do it. People are going to collect. And, and it's not that, I, you know, I'm upset that somebody else is collecting. No, you know, other people have to do it too right along. I mean, you know, gosh, it's just the way it goes. But, you know, just just be very guarded, very careful. That's, and That's a good question too. People are asking, and I've wondered this myself, what are your thoughts as far as the objects and the, the, the energy or the spirit attached to them? Do you think that within that barn they interact with each other, that they know that there are other spirits around? I'm told, yes. Um, what, what's your opinion on that? I don't know because the, the, there's a weird story, and I very seldomly talk about it. I remember I was working on like four or five cases that were just super, super dark. All kinds of uh, things were going on. And one night I had gone down, believe it or not, I'll go months without even going down into the, into the uh, museum. I just, it, I just don't have a reason to go down. But anyways, and I was going down because a door slammed. So I was walking down and it was like this battle started taking place. High pitched noises. And I had to cover up my ears. That's happened to me several times. And then it was like all this other ruckus was going on. And I was like, you know, I, I said to myself, oh, shit, all hell's going to break loose in here. And I went down the corridor to go out, and that door slammed, and it was like everything just stopped. I, and I went, I'm going to go back in there, and everything's going to be trashed. Went back in. Nothing was moved. Nothing was touched or anything. Right. And I was, tell, I was telling a couple of different spiritual friends about it, and they said, that's because you so much that you were involved with at that point that there was just a buildup. And that's how it reacted. I go, but was it the items or the cases? And to this day, everybody keeps telling me it was the common combo of everything. Yep. But it was we It was very strange. It was very weird. But you never thought um, about putting cameras in there and just keeping an eye on things to see what goes on when you're not in there. Or you're I, not I, 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 in you know, it, um, 
I'm, I, I don't know. You know, I'm probably one of the worst freaking paranormal investigators you're ever going to meet <laughs> because I picked up some of the worst habits and I got them from my aunt and uncle. A lot of times, John, I go out and work on cases. I don't even document things. Right. My thing is, I, I, you're doing, you're doing, if I'm doing something that's going to be able to help somebody out, right. you know, kumbaya and I move on. I, I, and it's not a good thing to do. And I agree. Should there be cameras up? Could there be things going on that I'm not even witnessing? Probably, uh, probably. I, you know, I'm not going to say but no it's because also good that you're not kind of exploiting the thing and making it a gimmicky thing by saying, "Hey, look at this," uh, you know, live feed from my museum. You're not really one of those guys either that's looking to. I stuff like that doesn't. No, I respect that about. Yeah, you it's just not you either. You know. I know, but again, too. Do you give into the whole thing too that sometimes when things are the, of the darker nature that if you give it attention and you pay that it, it just keeps it that energy so if you ignore it and it, it just drains it more and takes away its power absolutely so that's that's, thing. she tries that with me it doesn't work no it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> so uh people of course are asking about haunted collector and will there ever be new episodes of the haunted collector uh no no there would never uh i don't think i um, would uh, do something struck, maybe, you know, something similar. As most of you all know, you, you, you fall off the chair and, and a lot of you all hear about it. Some of the shows I've sh I turned down. I turned down just about everything, you know, that you could possibly think of. And, you know, there's been a lot of uh, opportunities uh, to do things. And I don't know. Will will I go back eventually doing something? Probably. I think you will. I you know I will. Especially you know, the pandemic. I think you've got it. You got the bug again. I think. I think what it, you know what hit me more than anything, and, it, and it's comical. It, it was that they showed a bunch of episodes during the pandemic, and they were showing them in the morning. And one of my mutual friends had called and said to me. He goes, they're showing him in the freaking morning and it's blowing up the freaking numbers. Goes, we can't believe this. See, here's the and I go, well, it's Haunted Collector, having breakfast with the Haunted Collector. <laughs> Somebody just posted this about you should do a YouTube show with your items. You and I talked about this. Uh, John's a very honest guy. John's, that's what I, again, I admire about the guy is ask him a question, you get an answer. And we we were doing that a little back and forth like before we started here. And very honest. And <laughs> When I first said to him, when I first met him again, I told him, big fan of yours. I've admired you for years. You know, Haunted Collector, that's how, you know, I started watching you on TV. And he said to me, you know, the show I wanted to do, are you okay with me talking about this? Or okay, Yeah. He said, the yeah. show I wanted to do, which would have been a brilliant show, was I wanted to feature an item in my museum every week, tell the story about how I, I came to have it, where it came from, what types of things were happening. And I said to him, that would have been friggin' brilliant. Now, that's between two paranormal guys. TV executives, they don't have that brain. They go, <laughs> and this is what he said to me. They said, no, we picture you more as the haunted collector. You go find haunted objects and buildings. And John said, again, this is what he said to me, I would rather do this thing, which I think would be great. And they flat out said, do you want to be on TV? <laughs> And, you know, you agreed to do it because you were, you know, involved with objects and you have a museum and you agreed to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but now you're at the point where you've been doing this forever. You can sort of make your own play here, you know, and I would. Yeah. Think, what do I do? I, I say no. Let's talk, stay man. home. Let's the show. Yeah, I stay home. I uh, you know, would chip coffee would be like the odd couple of the power. I would pay. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, oh! I, 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 I wish I, I wish I had thought about it. There's a rag doll, not Annabelle, but I got this rag doll, and Chippy gave me one of his scarves. You know, his scarves that he sells, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, and well, I wrapped it around the the rag doll, and I took a picture and sent it to him. Oh, Chippy cursed me out. <laughs> It's been hanging up down on that wall for about imagine. eight or nine years now. I could imagine. And one of these days, I got to take a picture and put it out there. But yeah, he gave me a scarf and I wrapped it around it and it's up on the wall. It's hysterical. 
Oh, we got to see that. Uh, they ask about your, your kids. Uh, they were yeah. involved in the Hornet Collector. Show. Yes. Are they still involved in the paranormal in any way, shape, or form? Uh, well, let's see. Amy beepops around still a little bit with the haunted items. She gets intrigued by the information. Okay. She she does. She used to do that before. She would look at something or see it, and then she would come out and tell me, "Dad, guess what I found out?" And I go, "What?" You know, she did do that. Okay. Uh, Chris, right at this point in time, is uh, very much in love and he's a very happy camper uh, with his girlfriend. His focus is um, but I I will say this to you: we've had conversations, and we would just chit chat back and forth. And I go, "You ready to go back out on the road?" And it was for the longest time that both of them would go, no, no, no. Now it's like, well, what are you thinking, Dad? And I'll go, whoa! <laughs> so above too. I mean, and you were kind of like that, too. I mean, a few years there, you were just like, no, no, I did that. I did that. I did that. And then you would tell me that, you know, they're, they're pitching all these different ideas to me. And, you know, I'm thinking about it. But I, I do. I think, again, it would be great to see you back out there because... In the right, in the right venue. I'm not just saying do anything. Yeah, but we're missing the you obvious what I mean? here. What about your spouse? How does she handle this? Does she get involved in this privately in any way, or she just lets you do your thing? And that my uh, Cheryl, Cheryl, my wife, does not. Uh, she believes in the paranormal. Mm -hmm. she, uh, you know. Uh, she could tell you sometimes if there's family members around or something like that, but she has no interest in it. They tried to get her involved with Haunted Collector, and they tried telling her where to stand, what to do. She turned around, told them, you F off, and she would never have any part. <laughs> you, you, th you think I'm one to just See, take a stand? I'd watch that. And I remember st I stood right there, and I looked at the two producers. I go, I told you, don't push her. You're messing with an Italian girl, and you're making a big oh, mistake. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. But, you know, she'll go sometimes to the events. She'll go with me sometimes. And, uh, you know, a little bit, she's a little bit more, you know, gets a little bit more uh, involved since both of us have been home with trying to figure out what I do, how I do it and everything. And because she, she had said to me at one point in time, she goes, I, for the life of me, I could not figure out what the hell you do sitting out in that damn office. She goes, now I know you're doing emails. You're trying to do Facebook messages. You do this. The phone is ringing. The cell phone's ringing. I mean, she goes, I, yeah. And she go, She said to me, she says, I didn't realize how much you get. I said, what the hell did you think I was doing out here? <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm not sitting here watching porn. That's for sure. <laughs> but, you know, it, yeah, huh? Because we didn't even talk about the books. How many books have you written? There's four and there's two more in the works. Get out of here. Yeah. You've been working this time on new books. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I should basically say Debbie has, Debbie Elward. Okay. Uh, Debbie and, and Larry Elward are, God, we're, we, we, we've we just been together since, Larry and I, since we were 19, 20 years old. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking a lot of years and Debbie, you know, uh, again, too. And um, she she loves to take notes. Thank God. She, she takes notes on everything that we're doing and everything. And she'll just keep continuously. And I said, all right, why don't you just throw everything together and we'll get a book out there. That's how, you know, what lurks within came about. Okay. It's not a normally structured book. Right. It's more like our adventures. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. You know, and now she's uh, just about pretty much got book two wrapped up. And she's got another couple of projects that she wants to get off that we were involved with too. And, I'm all for it. I'm so all for it. So the books that are out there, the four books that people, I'm sure, can get on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Absolutely, you can get uh, any of them on uh, Amazon. Um, what are the titles? John, I knew you were going to ask me that, and you're all <laughs> <laughs> that. That is pathetic. <laughs> just go that, on Amazon, or, or just get, yeah, or go, go on johnsoffice.com. I know we have three of them. Sha so Shadows of the Dark. Okay. Haunted by the things you love, you demon haunted, and what lurks within. There you go. You See, it. because you caught me on the spot, I had it. I went. <laughs> I know we've got a few of them. So there you I go. Yeah, them. you know, uh, uh, Shadows of the Dark is an interesting one. That came from uh, Brian McIntyre. Again, didn't believe in anything. Didn't believe in hauntings or anything. Now the guy's a freaking priest. 
Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, and I go, well, don't blame that on me. I didn't tell you to become a priest. <laughs> you didn't have to go that far. <laughs> well, no, he's Greek, he's Greek Orthodox, and um, he's married and has kids and everything. But that just goes to tell you, he he did it, and he was doing things up and didn't believe in anything whatsoever. Had an experience. He got scratched in, in Gettysburg at Farnsworth House way, way, way back in the day. And um, that convinced him that there was something to the whole spiritual thing and he took it down the path of you know a religious perspective and uh, i know somebody asked this too and i want to get to again the question people ask what your kind of like uh, your favorite memory of ed and lorraine do you do you have one i'm sure there's many oh but does God. anything stand out you know among other things <sighs> or just in general things that you enjoyed the the, the one thing that I miss more than anything was him just popping in the house. Now, my mom and dad lived with us till they passed away and they had an apartment in the lower level of the house. Okay. So, you know, he would always just stop in. You know, him and Lorraine a lot of times, you know, uh, would just stop in and everything. But as, the, you know, time went on, he would just stop in randomly. Now, my uncle was one of these people. He doesn't knock on a door or anything, opens a door, comes in. <laughs> and just sits down and starts talking to you. And he used to do that all the time because I used to have my office down below. And he would just come in, sit down, have these random talks. He'd be talking about family. Then he'd be talking about paranormal. Then he would be asking me questions. And then he would just get up and walk out. And I would sit there and go, what the hell was that all about? He was like, like Obi Wan Kenobi. He was like all these lessons. But it it is something that it's so hard to explain, John. I don't know how to explain. It was random, right? You know, and, and he would just sit there. It could be twenty, twenty five minutes, or it could be like an hour, and then he would just get up out of the chair and walk out of the house. Wow. Yeah, whatever he had to say. But, you know, whatever, you know, now I understand a lot of it was because he would be bouncing things and he'd be talking about things that he normally he wouldn't be talking about. Right. And he would just want to get the feedback because he always would say that to me. He goes, I can always count on you and just telling me how it is. He says, you don't care. He goes, you just say whatever you want. And I go, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's me. So, but that, I, I think, is one of the things I miss more than anything yeah. in the world. Those talks with him, huh? Just but to, that, it, but that's, a, that's a really unique relationship because, I mean, again, how many people do you know tell you what you want to hear instead of just telling you how and, and giving you a perspective that they need? Because a 99, lot of people, 99% of people. They tell you what you want to hear because mm -hmm. they don't want to rock anything. They want to, they want to be right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, too, it, um, it, 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 I think the, the two things that that and what bothers me more than anything is he never lived to be able to see the movies. Yeah. Yeah. And he strived for that, and yeah. you know he always was talking about it, and always trying to get something off the ground. I remember doing a, a, a pitch for a TV show with them back wow. in, in in the nineties, and it, it they, they, oh gosh, they were so excited and so happy about it, and you know there were two or three of us that were going to be involved with it, and you know it, it, I, it's just things like that, but I think. You know, um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to take that stance back and say to myself, holy shit, that was one hell of an education. Oh, my God. I mean, again, there's those of us in the field who got into it for different reasons and, and have our own path. Yeah. You really are. I mean, like the royal family. You know what I mean? Well, I, <laughs> oh, you're like the Kennedys of the paranormal. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know. See, I don't. I. I it's hard for me to view things from that way. I just don't. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't have that, you know, in me. Right. And I mean, you know, people say to me, well, about you. you don't, it's not you. 
I, I yeah, I'm not. I, I don't know. I just, I, you know, I just like, I just like being me. Right. You know, and I like being a clown. I love to horse around with people, and people like will say, it. my, you know, and, and my wife picked up on it on one of the conventions she went with me. She goes, man, she goes, you either love someone or you hate them. She goes, there's no in between with you. And I go, it's cut and dry. Yeah, that, he, that, he, that's he just the way I. First, and then he then he grew to like me after a little while. At first, I was who really bugging, you? I was bugging him to come to my convention. I was harassing him. I was sleeping on his lawn, and he got <laughs> sick of me and told everybody he hated me. And then I went to. I have friends. never told anybody I hated you. I went to friends of his. No, because I you said, got tipped off. You got tipped off. Bad person. Please. No, you got Please. tipped off because somebody told you the way to get to him is just keep keep calling him, keep calling him. Then finally he'll pick up the phone and go, what do you want? <laughs> but again, uh, it just you're one of those guys, again, real deal. What you see is what you get, and um, people should buy your books. People should come out and meet you if they can at these college lectures. I would love to attend one of those lectures myself. Um, the, the last question I wanted to ask you, and I, I think we talked about this before. And I got one when you're done. Your friends or people in high school, whatever, did they know who Ed and Lorraine were? And were you kind of like a kind of weird, you know, they treat you like you were kind of, you know, like the goth kids, you know what I mean? How they're dressing. <laughs> did, did, did they treat you like you were like, whoa, he's kind of a, his, the his head, not going, kind of weird. And they do uh, stuff. yeah. Uh, Yes, yes and no. Um, I went to Catholic school, you know, again. Um, so it, it was veered and looked at differently. And you always had to be careful. And you had to be guarded because the other parents and things would get nervous because, you know, everybody was a Satanist if you got involved with, you know, doing anything paranormal, you know, and the perfect example of that, John, is between my two daughters and my son, there's 11 and 10 years difference between them. Okay. When the girls were growing up, don't, don't let my friends know nothing. No, no, blah, blah, blah. When, with my son, it was the opposite. I was the coolest freaking dad in the it's neighborhood. So it's weird how, <laughs> you know, it evolved and it changed. Right. But the, it, it, it was yes and no, because I can remember some of my friends just talking to me about some of the stuff, you know, from the cases from the 80s and stuff, you know, when uh, my aunt and uncle were working on them and things. Yeah, but uh, t totally different realm of looking at it, you know, uh, years ago compared to, to today. today. Uh, yeah. I, I just can't imagine like, you know. Uh, you know, hey, what'd you guys do this weekend? Oh, we bought the new Led Zeppelin album, smoked some weed, and hung out over Barney's house. John, what'd you do? Oh, I was with my aunt and uncle at some exorcism down the... <laughs> well, wait a minute there, yeah, man. I grew up in the 70s. Don't rule me out of the oh, party. Right. Oh, no. Okay. No, no. I tried to hit so, the time frame there. I want to ask the question, this question to put out there to everybody because I always think it's always good to get a little nugget from somebody that has had the experiences that you have in the longevity in this field to everybody that's watching. And even to us, what would be one of the most sage advice that you could give to any of us that's approaching the paranormal and doing any of this? He knows I'm not going to listen to this. Hush up. Know. Hush up. Tell him Chris. <laughs> no, I j keep searching, keep looking, you know, uh, do things with, uh, um, respect. If something doesn't feel right, follow your gut. You know, we got we got a lot of people out there just doing some really, you know, uh, cuckoo uh, oh, yeah. things out there, and we all got to be guarded and we got to be very careful. As I always say, ticky ticky tock tock. You know, we got a lot of those people that got involved with our field that we got to be careful and guarded with. But to me, no. I mean, I think it's important. Everybody's got to, you know, get involved with it. Keep up with the equipment. Keep searching. Keep digging. That's how we're going to find the answers. So, again, I, I'm all for that. You know, because it's hysterical. I pick on everybody in my paranormal group because it takes them two hours to set all the freaking equipment up and everything, you know. And me, I'll just 
do my thing, go in, I investigate, and I'll go, well, check out over here, check out over there, see if you're going to pick something up, and they'll go do EVPs or something there, and they'll go, well, how do you know things like that? I said, I don't know. I said, just, just, just the way it is, you know, because if somebody, thing. yeah, I mean, you, it just happens to you, you know, after a while, you just, you yeah, know. You're, it, credit, you're open to the equipment. You know what I mean? There, there are people that... Oh, my God. I, I'd be thrilled to death if I could turn three quarters of it on. I don't even know how to turn half the shit on. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It. That's, that's oh, I'm very, very... I, mean, I am so... I, I get very, very intrigued with it and watching it when people are using it. And right. I, I think that's that's one of the best things in our field. You know, it is that and watching it. And when somebody shows me something, I'm very intrigued with it. Yeah, because, you know? I mean, I would talk to Jane Darty about, um, you know, what did people do before equipment? You know, mm -hmm. and she was like, you know, recorders with the microphone. That's they right. A lot of works with, a lot of people worked with mediums and sensitives like Hans. Holzer. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And, and I get that aspect of the paranormal investigating. I really do. But. You know, as far as like documenting and 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 testing and researching, yeah, you sort of do need something beyond that. You know what I mean? I think. well, yeah, but that's you document it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but we still have to keep our roots. Of course, we still have to. Of course, you know, um, it, it, because that's one thing that drives me nuts when somebody calls me up, John. I just did this investigation and I didn't get any you know, scientific proof to back it. What scientific proof? There is nothing that is recorded that we're gathering evidence. We're gathering everything we can. Yes. And that, that's, that's a key element. But don't tell me just because you need to get something scientifically. It's not scientific. You're just gathering data. For scientific yeah. proof, you need repeatability. And we don't have that because Casper yeah, exactly. will not listen to us. <laughs> so, again, you know, it's important with all of it. But I, I'm, yeah, again, too, I'm very, you know, down to roots with investigating. I want to know who, what, where, when, how, run the recorders, takes pictures, watch what's everybody else. Thing, what's one thing that you would tell any of us out there that you would never do or you should never do on an investigation? Oh, I know this one. He's going to say eat White Castle hamburgers. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the one thing is, um, with the cases, find out what's happening before you, you you move forward. Do your research. Find out what is going on. Is it the property? Is it the people? Is there mental illness? Is there drug abuse, alcohol abuse, spousal abuse? All these things affect our cases. Yep. So I tell people, take your time. Because I love when, that's another thing. When somebody calls me up and I'll go, well, is there any, you know, are they on any prescription drugs? I don't know. Are they religious? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I go, and you're telling me demons are coming up through the floorboards. How long were you there? Yeah. Oh, I was there 20 <laughs> minutes and ran out. That, that's not an investigation. Yeah. It's so easy to put a black shirt on and just go do what you think you see on TV. You know what I mean? <laughs> you really have to, when you're going into people's homes, you have to. Yeah, there is responsibility. Well, that, that, you know, again, it's, it, it, it's different doing our investigations from what you see on TV or, you know, it, it, it's a different world. You know, and people have to understand that because, again, it's hard for me, just like you, John, I'm friends with 99% of them that have TV shows out there. Yeah, I know. We're personal friends before yeah, all the TV you shows. Gotta walk the line and, you know, and again, you know, it, it is what it is and. It's entertainment, and people have to understand that yep. when things are cut, pasted, and yep. yeah, it's all over the place. It's just and the nature of it. Yep. It's, it's just the nature of it. And they so. are trying to entertain. And, and Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we'll stop there so we don't get in trouble. <laughs> John, I thank you so much. Well, dinner. it's been so good to see you two after a year and a half. I mean, it's, even though it was yeah, virtual. <laughs> well, this is still a little more like normal, you know, that we're getting yeah. back to it. I, I do hope that we see you down the road. And if you can make it to the Creeper or something, just let me know. And, you know, we'll hang out. It'd be good to see you. Sounds good to me, buddy. Thanks for All right. Time. You two take care. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. Stay hope you enjoyed it. Well. Go buy John's books. Follow John's page. 
and be kind to and each other. And he will be back on TV soon. You've heard it here first. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's making psychic predictions. <laughs> Bye. Take care, guys. <laughs>